guys, Farmer Jeremiah here with Jokers Farm. Today we're going to be stringing up these tomatoes. Like I was talking earlier, we're going to be doing the basket weaving method. Never done it before, so we're going to try it out. What I'm going to do is take some, you can get some tomato uh, twine. I got some baling twine, it'll work just as well. Some rot resistant is what you would probably prefer, like jute or something like that. Let's get a rot pretty fast, and you might get some not so great results because your twine starts degrading over the season and your tomatoes just start falling in on themselves. So, you want to get some kind of a synthetic type of twine that's going to last you the whole season. Now there's some different boxes and stuff you can get. I don't have one where you put it on your hip and you get like a PVC pipe and just what you're going to do is pretty much sew them together like a hedge. So I have an idea of how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to start getting ready for that and then I'll show you if I can get it down. Okay, so we got this first little section done. A little bit more difficult than I had imagined, but as you can see, we just kind of weaved in and out of the plants. This one took it pretty good. This one's multi branched. Uh, I think I'm going to, I don't know, I think I'll leave it, I'll tie them together. But um, I think once you start really get going, this one's still leaning, but I'll probably do another layer soon. I think once you start getting them trained, it becomes easier and easier. Plus the method of me just leaving the spool at the end and dragging it. It's not the most efficient and easiest way, but it worked. So it's the first time I've ever done this. So just got to make sure your line stays a little taut. I may go back and um, redo it, especially pulling it tight. Other than that, it worked out pretty good. Now one thing is only wrapped it once, so I should have wrapped it a couple of times here, but as we progress we'll, I'll wrap it around the pole a few times and then we'll start wrapping the tomatoes. But I went in there and kind of tightened it up, this one's laying a little bit, but it'll come back up. Now I only have two plants in this section, there's one on the very end that's doing not too well, so it's kind of hard to be like, well I'm going to... Um, wrap these up it's kind of silly to do three plants in a section I think so I may do something different on this section but we still have to do these other sections here so for these ones I'm just going to use a really long river cane that I get from my friend go sleep 918 from this pond. It's pretty tall. So yeah, I'm just going to get some pantyhose and start tying them to that. And then today we're also going to be just doing some basic pruning, making sure we get the suckers. And like this one. And this one. And um, in the high tunnel, we got some more plants that we need to string up as well. These are the Italian romas. I'm going to grow on a single stem. The Italian romas I got growing on this fence line, I got this romaine lettuce to flower for me because I don't want to buy any more romaine seeds. So I'm going to collect the seed off these. But like I was saying, I'm going to let the Roma tomatoes on this line just bush out. And then I'm going to bring these tomatoes to one stem. I'm a, I like to experiment and see what kinds of things look better or grow better for me. I just like to experiment. And then i got a Juliet Hybrid here. I'm growing in a one and a half gallon bucket it's pretty neat it's actually doing a lot better than I would even imagine so I got it 
starting to train up this cattle panel. Then I got an early girl in a five gallon bucket. Now after doing a couple of rows, I found it easier if you just um, just pull the line through and just kind of lazily, sorry my shadow, kind of lazily run it to where you want it. And then once you know where you want it, then you pull it tight. Just kind of let the string do the work there. And then it seems to do a lot better if you just kind of do it that method. Some of these I don't think are ready, so I'm just going to let them grow out a little bit more before I start tying them off. These are the stakes that we're going to use to tie down the tomatoes. On a side note, we started a fall crop of Roma tomatoes. We started them a little early because I'm doing an experiment where I'm trying different mixtures out for soilless mix. But we already got our fall crop started a month early, but that'll be okay. We planted them on the 1st of May. So we'll just come up beside the plant here, grab the stake down where it's just a little bit of a head sticking out and that should be good. Now we'll tie it to the nail head just a simple double knot. Not too much in the way, but we'll tie it off there. There we go, now we have that tied. Just a simple knot, it will slide. Ooh, that's hot. Ooh! <laughs> then, just come in here. What we do is just twist the plant around the string. that help them support it. I don't want this stuck to here. So we'll try and leave all the one string as well. It's a little slack. Here's our pearl on that we have this done too. Starting to put on some flowers and I have one little tomato. But it's about time to twist it on again. When it gets tight like that. Usually come around. Just be careful and watch this bud. If you break those off, that wouldn't be cool. There you go. If they grow a little bit taller, I usually like to get them under the uh, leaf there. There's our new beehive. You can see they're hanging off the bottom board. It's called bearding, like a beard on a person. It's because the hive's pretty warm. They're trying to keep it cool for the brood and the queen. So, kind of just waiting in line, hanging out, trying to keep the hive cool.
got this last week. It's almost time to check on them and probably expand on them.